Hello and welcome to my video journal. Uh, my name is Edward Seaton and I have recently purchased a boat here in Bodega Bay, California. Um, here's some shots of me um, on the boat right after I purchased it and uh, just showing off some of the most amazing scenery there is in Northern California. It's gorgeous up here. So during these video logs, what I'm going to try and do is uh, just take you along on the journey. Um, this is more for me than anybody else, just to kind of document uh, the experience and all the projects and all the goals and plans. So uh, I hope you enjoy the show. My land base currently is in Occidental, California, and Bodega Bay is about uh, 20 minutes, 25 minutes drive. Uh, so here I am driving out to my boat. Uh, on one of those first days, it was really smoky back then. Um, we had had just experienced a whole bunch of fires. It was pretty, pretty gnarly. This is the hardest part of the whole dream, you know, of sailing around the world and documenting your experience. And the hardest part is actually turning on a camera, and pointing at your face, and. Uh, explaining what the hell you're doing. <laughs> I try not to drive off the road. Coleman Valley Road is probably not the best road to be uh, doing this sort of thing on, but never mind. So a little backstory uh, as we get started here with these, I don't know what you want to call them, captain's logs maybe. This boat concept, maybe sailing around the world, has been something I've been interested in for a very long time. And uh, it's just now becoming a reality, some sort of reality. I don't know what it looks like exactly, but I bought a boat. She's 32 feet long. She's a sailboat, which is important. Anyway, so yeah, step one is to learn the ropes, learn the lines, figure this out. My biggest concern right now is honestly, it's not the sailing. Like I've said, I've done all that before on all kinds of boats. It's the dock handling. It's getting in and out of that damn dock. Uh, it's definitely a an older boat. Wow, look at that view. Smoky out there today. Sonoma County Smoky. So those first few trips out by myself were pretty, I don't know, anxiety filled, I gotta say. There's the uh, automatic tiller doing her thing. I was just super nervous to do things on my own. All right, came out of uh, Bodega Bay Harbor for the first time by myself. Pretty exciting stuff. Wide open ocean. I don't know if you can see. So this would be the time where I would be setting up my sails and uh, cutting the engine, but I think I'm gonna head back in. I did not plan on sailing today. Uh, mainly concerned about getting in and out of the slip. So far, so good. So baby steps. Uh, probably wait until I have someone else with me until I can throw the sails up. <clears throat> so I lied. I put up the head sail and I'm doing two knots in Bodega Bay on my own for the first time. I'm trying to think of something really inspiring and prophetic. Prophetic? Prophetic. I'm trying to think of something really prophetic to say, but uh, I'm kind of speechless. It's it's glorious.
my little home. Okay, uh, I've got my uh, auto tiller engaged. I've got my bumpers down. I didn't actually put them away. Not good form. Anyway, cruising down the channel, going to basically dock this thing on my own for the very first time. So I'm very nervous. I think I've got everything laid out. I've got my lines laid out. I've got my bumpers laid out. Um, just try not to hit anything. So it doesn't look like I'm very nervous here. I look like I'm pretty cool, like I know what I'm doing, but um, I think I was about as nervous, if not more nervous than landing a hang glider for the first time here. Um, it doesn't look all that hair raising. Um, looks pretty nice actually. But um, having never maneuvered a, a boat this size um, in close quarters like this, it was a real test of my, of my will to get it done. Um, I was prepared to jump off, I had my lines laid out, and at the very last minute here, um, someone on the dock who obviously saw how nervous I was uh, offered to give me a hand. So he runs up, I throw him a line. I'm so glad I did too, because I'm still coming in. I'm just not even thinking about it now, I'm just drifting in. Um, but he grabbed the front line and uh, I almost fell off the boat back there, but managed to stand um, on the dock and tie it down. And that was it. So owning a boat means lots and lots of boat projects. And one of the first projects that I did was um, tackle these blocks that were on, uh, for this is for the jib furling line. And um, they made a lot of noise, I always got in the way, was always tripping over them. So I decided that that would be the first thing to do. Um, I bought these, um, I bought these like little nylon, um, there's a, these guys, the nylon little rings that you screw on to the, to the bottom of the lifelines there. Um, and that's all the junk that I took off that was rattling around. Here's a quick shot of me doing the actual work. Um, but it was a super cheap fix and it seems really solid. I think it'll work really well. Um, <clears throat> one of the other projects, I have all these bins and uh, I wanted to create like um, tops for them so they weren't so ugly and plastic and horrible. So here I am sanding down some rectangle tops for those little storage containers um, and they have been super super useful um, yeah so uh, when I first got down here I was sleeping um, in the in the salon in the main area the main cabin I guess you could say uh, where the dining table is basically you lower the dining table and then you can uh, really stretch out I'm kind of tall I'm six foot four so I'm probably too big for this boat, but um, I was sleeping like this for a little while and it was pretty good. I, I fit on it. It was nice to have a bit of room, um, but there was like these ridges from where the table and the, and the couch actually meet. So um, I ended up going with something different, but you'll see that later. Just gotta make sure everything's fine. This is another job that I'd like to um, do at some point is to change out this companionway door. I hate it, I can't stand it. It takes forever to get in and out. So that's definitely a project for the list.
I really tried to go out as much as I could. Um, you'll notice that it's really calm right here. I'm still very, very nervous about just getting in and out of the slip. Um, and so I would go out when there was no wind, when there was a slack tide, so I wasn't worried about current and being dragged. And my biggest concern is being drug into one of these other fancy boats that's near me and doing a whole bunch of damage that I can't afford to fix right now. So um, this is a rather wet, miserable, very calm day uh, where I am just basically doing maneuvers in the harbor. I'd go down to the end of the harbor and do figure eights at the end of the at the end of the pier there, and try to dock along the along the line by myself. Just just do it over and over. I think I felt satisfied that I uh, I could have stepped off that one if I wanted to. But um, here's some time lapse footage of just the same the same kind of drills, just going around and around in circles. It it looks really boring, but um, I mean. Repetition, 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 right? I want to get to the place where I don't even think about this. This is just all second nature, and um, the only way you're going to do it is just by, by doing it. So here I am sailing around in circles in the harbor, riveting stuff. I really tried to like actually step out of the boat, you know, eventually like as if I was coming in for a landing. Um, and it looks pretty easy. I mean, it's when it's dead calm like this, it is super easy. There's nothing to it. Um, but you add a little bit of current in there or a little bit of wind and she starts drifting off into something and it can get real funny real fast. I did have one instance where when my dad was visiting, we went out for sale and I hopped out like I just did there. Um, and somehow the boat just slipped away from me and started floating back the other direction. But luckily I had my, uh, I had the, I had a hold of the, the, the bow line and I was able to pull it back in. Another first for me was um, actually using a dinghy. Uh, never used a dinghy before, it's not something I've ever done. So uh, here I am blowing up the dinghy, my dinghy, for the first time uh, with a foot pump. And then the idea here was I was going to attach it to the, uh, the main halyard and hoist it up on the deck to see if it would fit. And it doesn't fit. <laughs> um, not a big fan of this dinghy. I do some more tests and stuff with it later on. But uh, here I am just seeing how, how easy it is to uh, unroll it and, and fill it up again. I mean, honestly, I should be doing this on the deck of the boat, which is where it would be happening, you know, if I was to use the dinghy. Um, but these were the first few times that I did it. So give me a break. <laughs> I ended up getting a Ryobi pump for the dinghy. Um, it's used for tires and for air mattresses and whatnot. It does a good job of blowing this thing up. Uh, and here I am uh, putting it in the water, moving it around the boat, trying that out. And I'm gonna hook up the, the, the little two and, a, two and a half horsepower Honda engine that I have for it right here. Um, and this again is the first time I'm ever doing this. So I tied myself off to the, to the pier there and here I am giving it a you know, a try. It kept firing and then dying right away. 
and um, the only way it would fire is if I had the, the throttle all the way open. Turns out that the, the little venting cap on the fuel tank itself needed to be cleaned out and as soon as it started venting properly, um, the engine started and had no trouble. It's a good little engine. Um, so I was about to leave there and then I was like, well, maybe I should get an ore just in case the engine dies. And so I went back to get my sunglasses and an ore and uh, started right up. And I took off, as soon as I took off, the camera dies. I can hate this, man. Like, what are we doing? What am I doing? Driving down the road, thinking about what to say to a camera that's blocking my vision of oncoming traffic. That's what I'm doing. So here I am down at the boat again, um, taking her out on a very calm day. Just really learning how to do everything on my own. Um, I don't know if it's it's apparent to you at this point, but like I'm doing all this stuff by myself. So um, all of the things that I'm doing are not that difficult, but when you do them by yourself, you run the risk. Like if you know any little thing happens, we fall over and you know lose control of the boat or whatever. There's no extra eyeballs or extra hands on deck to help you out, and so everything is is kind of done slowly and precisely that was me uh, basically laying out the lines for coming back into the slip this is me adjusting the the auto helm which makes it really nice when you're actually coming in you can you know use this time to clean up your lines and whatnot There are lots of things to practice, you know, like I said, I've done some sailing in the past, but not a whole lot. And um, just getting familiar with this rig um, has taken quite, quite some time. This is me in one of my first, I think my first attempts of just really figuring out the, the reefing lines. Reefing lines are those two lines at the back of the sail there towards the camera. Um, you can kind of see them hanging slack. And they're used to uh, basically shorten the sail or make the sail smaller. Um, so if you're in a really windy, windy situ situation and you don't want as much sail out, you would reef the sail down and make the sail smaller in the, in the wind. So that's what I'm doing here is checking my reefing lines, reefing points. Currently, um, you know, during this shot, basically the reefing lines were run back into the cabin of the boat. So theoretically, you can do all this stuff from the, the helm, um, which is the safest place to be in a, in a blow or whatever. Uh, it doesn't really work out that way um, in reality. Um, you'll notice that I have to go to the mast to do anything to the sail itself anyways, to raise and lower it. You have to uh, attach and detach a clue, which is this, you know, big thing that clamps onto the bottom of the sail in the, in the, by the mast there. So you already have to go forward to the sail to adjust that. So basically what I'm gonna do is, um, is run my reefing lines basic back to the mast and just do all my business from the business end of the sailboat. Here I am just hanging out in the cockpit and uh, making some tea. It's a very cozy little boat. Not huge, 32 feet long, if I haven't said that so far. Uh, it's, a, it's an Ericsson um, 32. I don't, they didn't really have a name. It's just an Ericsson is the name of the, the, the boat itself, is a brand, and it was built in 1975. So here I am um, docking the boat for, you know, I don't know how many times I've done this now, but all by myself, you'll see I just jump off like that. I have a good hand hold on to the, um, 
onto the lifelines there. I have both lines in my hand, I'm ready to go. I don't have a whole lot of shots of actual sailing going on. This is, um, this was because basically I was so nervous about sailing I wasn't thinking about filming, but uh, in this one instance here, um, my friend Tim joined me and we got to sail uh, quite a bit that day. It was a really great day. This is us basically coming back into the harbor, Bodega Bay Harbor. There's a small inlet that you gotta go down and then wiggles down this path. And um, I actually got video of this moment um, coming up here in a second because it was one of the only times that I got into some, some trouble. We're coming down and we're entering the, the, the narrow spot here between these pylons. And we had way too much sail out. The wind gusted right there, rounded up into the wind. Didn't really know what to do, so we basically just let it go straight into the wind. Um, then we had a bunch of lines tangle. I whacked my head on the mast. It was, you know, everything that can go wrong went wrong. One of the the, um, the jib lines was caught around uh, the bumper, and I had to go forward and untangle all that before we got everything. So now we're basically back. You know, the 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 sail, the jib sail is back winded at this point, and we're going back in the direction we were just coming from. So we're out of danger at this point, but uh, we're still not going the right direction. So here I am untangling um, the jib line. It was tangled around a buoy. Uh, got that free. And then we turned around and headed back down with a little less sail. Everything was fine. But that was the closest I came to disaster in the first few, uh, in the first few months of owning the boat. I want to thank you for watching all the way through my first captain's vlog. If you'd like to lend a hand with my adventure, liking and subscribing really, really helps. I also have an Amazon boat project list, so if you really want to help, you can click on the link in the description. There you can help me purchase all the kit that I'm going to need to make this dream some kind of reality. Thanks again for watching.